Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and today we're talking about Python again. Python definitely is a bit slower language and how I came to know that it's a slower language? You guys told me. In one of the previous video, which is known as Python Comprehension, I'll link that in the description section and you can go yourself and check out the comment section. I asked you to write a simple comment that what is the one thing that you love about Python? What is the one thing that you hate about Python? And 80 to 85% of the comments are saying that they hate Python because it's a slower programming language. And that, my dear friend, can be a bit of myth. Let's debunk that. See, the point is that it's not your fault that you believe that Python is a slower programming language. There is so much of the noise online in the forums, in the YouTube and almost every single place which says that Python is definitely a slower programming language. And it is, don't get me wrong here. But you need to understand that what makes Python a slower language, what are the details behind it. And by the end of the video, you will be able to say that no, it's not that of a slow programming language. Apart from that, I'll also discuss the DOPs of optimizing or improving the speed of the Python code or any other programming language as a matter of fact. So these DOPs don't, don't do yet, and do your profiling first. So these are known as DOP abbreviations of improving the performance of your code. We'll talk about them by the end segment of this video. But first, let me give you a few analogies that will help you to understand that whether a programming language is fast or fast enough for you or is actually a slow language. First, I would like to put a question to you. How you came up to know that Python is a slower language? Did you came up through a YouTube video or just an article or an online blog or just your friend told you? Now, putting up onto this conclusion that a language is slower just based on the fact that somebody told you is never really a good idea. You need to do your own performance matrix and own performance optimization or at least a benchmark check that whether your code is optimized or not. Let me tell you a fact. Majority of the time, it's not the Python that's slowing down your code or your performance of your program. It's majorly the data structures. And of course, I would like to put it that have you ever thought this fact that a, a code which is having a time complexity of O of n square is actually same if you write it in C or in Python, the time complexity is never measured based on the language itself. A O of n square code is just O of n square code, regardless of it is written in C++ or Python. But you know, this can be a great debate and you can come up with a fact that says, hey, the, the closer the code which is to the hardware, the faster it is. And that is why Python is not that much closer to the hardware and that is why C or C++ is a faster code. And I have spent enough time on the communities of C and C++ and there is a common joke around that floats in that community that, hey, the real programmer writes code in assembly because that's way closer to the hardware and it is way faster than C++. And in fact, you'll see quite a lot of people talking about libraries and modules that this library in the C++ is really, really slow. You should write it in assembly. The fact is that it's totally a myth that uh, a code which is more closer to the hardware, it's going to be faster. No, it's not going to be always the fact. It sometimes is, but it's not always the fact. Yes, of course, the data structure plays a big role in optimizing the code. And you might be getting into the fact when I said O of n square is just O of n square in C++ and in Python too. But let me tell you an analogy which will help you to further understand that how you can optimize your code a bit faster regardless of what programming language it is. Once there was a plan that me and two of my other friends are going to surprise one of our friend on his birthday. So it was a night plan out that we'll just rock and bang his door just right at midnight and we will be there. So I was the first one to reach at my friend's home, waited for five or six minutes. Another one of our friend reached out and we both were waiting for another friend who hasn't left his house yet. After 30 minutes, he came and we just celebrated the entire birthday. But you know, we were a little bit late. Now, do you think the late was because I reached late? No, because the third friend actually reached a bit late. So same thing happens in the programming world as well. You need to find out where your bottleneck is. Most of the time, whether it's any programming language, even Python, is actually fast enough for your code or the thing that you want to perform. The only thing that sometimes the bottleneck actually comes from the traffic in network or maybe hardware is a bit slower. 
For example, if you're looking up for somebody to log in into a system using Python framework or Python code or however you are doing it. And in that case, your database is actually running on a separate instance and connecting through that instance is taking a bit of time. Now this part of code, you cannot do much about it because it's gonna take some time to reach out that server and will ping it back. So this communication, this network traffic is actually the reason for the bottleneck of your code. So there is a one interesting thing before opting out saying that this language is totally a slow. That is, find out where the bottleneck is. And in majority of the cases, you can actually optimize your code to reduce those bottlenecks and say that yes, this programming language is fast enough. If Python would be so much of a pathetic language in slower terms, then why do you think that people in pen testing, in machine learning, and even in the web world using the Django, and it is so much of a popular programming language? We need to balance out the factor that what we are giving up and opting out a slow language, which is not even that much of a slow, it just is a myth that is floating around on the web. Now coming up on to the point where you might be trying to optimize your code. Now as I personally always say, don't optimize your code from the day one. Surely if you do, that is always a great idea, but I personally believe a project which is up and running is most important thing. Once the project is up and running, then work in fine tuning your work and optimizing its speed and stuff like that. A project which is up and running gives you a lot of confidence. So first work on that and definitely don't ignore the thing that you need to optimize and fine tune some of the work. Now coming up on to the point, while optimizing your code, the one of the major thing is profiling. But before that, two important thing comes up. The first one is don't optimize your code on the very first day. Now also, you're gonna hear a lot of people say that I want to just optimize, your, optimize my code and make it faster. But there should be measurable goals that you really want to achieve. Saying just, I want to make my code as fast as possible is not really a great thing to do. You need to just understand what should be the end goal. My code is performing in this much of the time and I want to take it to the this much of the time should be the end goal. There is no the, nothing like best possible code or best optimized time. It's not like that. There should always be some measurable performance and that is why we are optimizing or fine tuning our code. Remember, putting up optimizing in your code is majorly, major of the time is just fine tuning the stuff. It's not like you are rewriting or refactoring your entire big chunk of code. Another thing that you're gonna hear in the world of optimizing of the code is don't optimize if you can just replace your hardware. See, the thing is that the cost of the hardware is comparatively lower as compared to the cost of time of an engineer. So you're gonna hear this a lot that if you can replace a hardware, first opt out for that. Because hiring an engineer and then finding out that the solution was just the hardware is very, very expensive. So try to be on as much as good hardware as possible. And the third and the most important thing while writing faster code or optimized code is profiling. I've done this so many times during my work in masters in NS3 network simulator that we need to measure the code performance. It is very essential. We need to find out where the bottleneck of our code is. Is it in the networking? Is it in the input output? The IO performance is lagging or the code data structure is lagging in itself. And majority of the time you're gonna realize that it's usually the network that is bottleneck making the things. Yes, of course, there are other factors as well, but just coming out and saying that Python is a slow language is not really a justice to the language. And yes, of course, if that would be the case, surely assembly would be on the very top saying I'm the fastest of all. So on a whole story, I would like to summarize that no, Python is not that much of a slow language that you give and pass on the credit to the language. It is not that much of a slow language. It is definitely slower to compare to some other compiled language, but it is just unnecessarily becoming a villain of being a slower language. Make sure before you optimize your code, you profile your code that where are the bottlenecks and which part of the code should be optimized. And third, the most important thing is make sure you work on, on your data structures as well, which can definitely improve significantly your code speed and performance as well. In case you want to check out more, I'll link down in the below section my courses on data structure, which are super simple to understand and you're going to enjoy them a lot. And do make sure you check out the description and check out these courses. So when next time somebody says that Python is a slower language, give him the fact that why are you saying so? Do you have any measurable performance issues that you have faced? And I'm pretty sure that person is gonna just stuck like that. 
that's it for this video in case you have enjoyed it make sure you hit that subscribe button and i'm going to surely catch you up in the next video we used to be so good together